Okay, today we're going to go over um, the 2010 AP Calculus AB for your response questions. Um, so number one is a great question. Um, start just by reading it. It says, there no, is no snow on Janet's driveway when snow begins to fall at midnight. From midnight to 9 a.m., snow accumulates on the driveway at a rate modeled by the function f of t is equal to 7t e to the cosine of t cubic feet per hour, where t is measured in hours since midnight. Janet starts removing snow at 6 a.m., time equals 6. The rate g of t in cubic feet per hour at which Janet removes snow from the driveway at time t hours after midnight is modeled by the piecewise function g of t is equal to 0 from 0 to 6 because she didn't start removing snow until 6. Then 125 uh, for the first hour from 6 to 7 and then 108 for uh, the next two hours from 7 to 9. So obviously she's not removing any snow until 6 a.m. Then she's re removing um, 125 cubic feet per hour. Then she slows down after she gets tired and and evens out at 108 cubic feet per hour for the next two hours. Um, and then we have four questions. How many cubic feet of snow have accumulated on the driveway by 6 a.m. before she starts shoveling? Find the rate of change of the volume of snow on the driveway at 8 a.m. And then let h of t represent the total amount of snow in cubic feet that Janet has removed from the driveway at time t hours after midnight. Express h as a piecewise defined function with domain 0 less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to 9. How many cubic feet of snow are on the driveway? At 9 a.m. All right. So let's just go through these one by one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just assume that you have this in front of you. If you don't, you can get it off the College Board's website for free uh, under the AP Calculus AB homepage. So I'm going to shrink this here. And we'll refer to it later, so I'm going to move it up over there, and, and, and we'll come back to it. That looks pretty good. Uh, one important thing to notice is that this is a graphing calculator allowed question. So, All right. A is how many cubic feet of snow have accumulated on the driveway by 6 a.m.? Accumulation, we should immediately think integration. Um, an integral accumulates a rate of change. So if we have the rate of change of snow to find the amount that has accumulated, we just take the integral. So let's go ahead and do that for part A. We'll say, okay, we want from 0 to 6, so we just need to integrate from 0 to 6 this function f of t, which is 7t e to the cosine of t dt. And because this is a calculator allowed section and because we probably wouldn't be able to do this one by hand, we just ask our calculator what that equals and it will tell us that 142.275 feet cubed have accumulated in the first six hours. Um, all I have to worry about is this function f, which is the rate that the snow accumulates. I don't have to worry about g at all because Janet has not started removing the snow uh, during the first six hours. So just a straight application of integration problem there for part a. Um, we do always want to round our final answers to three decimal places unless they tell us to do something different. And since they don't, we round to three decimal places here. So that's part A. Let's move this out of the way for now. And we'll worry about part B. So part B, find the rate of change of the volume of snow on the driveway at 8 AM. Things get a little bit tricky here because I know that there's two rates affecting the amount of snow on the driveway. F is the rate of, that the snow accumulates, and G is the rate that the snow is removed by Janet. So, total, my rate of change of volume, um, I'm going to call V of T, 
because we're talking about volume. Um, we could even call it uh, v prime because it's the, let's do that, let's call it v prime of t because it's the change in volume. My derivative tells me the change. So v prime of t is going to be the amount of, the rate that the snow is falling, which is 7t e to the cosine of t. Then I, of course, need to subtract away the snow that Janet is removing, which at 8 a.m., she's removing 125, or I'm sorry, 108 cubic feet per hour. So we're just going to subtract away 108. Because f, the 7t e to the cosine of t, that's already in cubic feet per hour, and so is the 108. So I just subtract those two. Now this question asks specifically about the volume of snow on the driveway at 8 a.m. So I just need to find V of 8. And I plug that in. I plug it in anywhere I see a T. Um, and so V of 8, again, my calculator is going to tell me, is just negative 59.58 and this is going to be cubic feet per hour. And one thing to notice about that is um, a common mistake that people make is they try to put maybe a T with the 108, but the rate of change at which Janet removes the snow does not change for the in between hour 7 and hour 9. It's a constant 108 cubic feet per hour rate. So I don't need to put the T in there. The T would come in if I was going to integrate and find out how much snow she had removed uh, in those two hours. But the rate is just 108. Okay, so negative 59.583 cubic feet per hour is how the volume of snow is changing. Um... <clears throat> at 8 a.m. It's the instantaneous rate of change at 8 a.m. And that is part B. So again, let's get rid of that. Now part C says represent the total amount of snow, let H of T represent the total amount of snow in cubic feet that Janet has removed from the driveway at time T hours after midnight and then express h as a piecewise defined function with domain 0 to 9. All right. So, of course, there's going to be, if we're talking about the removal and it's going to be piecewise, we're going to use the same exact pieces as we have for g. So we're going to split it up for the first six hours, the next hour, and then the final two hours. Um, and... So h of t, well, I know that in the first six hours, the rate at which Janet removes snow is zero feet per hour. So for the first six hours, Janet has removed zero cubic feet of snow. So the amount removed um, is zero for zero less than t less than six. Okay. Now for the second, or I'm sorry, not for the second, but for the next two hours, hours, nope, nope, one more time, just for the next hour between six and seven, she removes 125 cubic feet per hour. Um, so I'm going to start with that 125 and then to figure out how many, or how much snow she's removed, I just multiply the rate, 125, times how long she's been doing it for. And a common idea would be to just put a T right there, and say, oh, well, she's removing 125 cubic feet per hour for T hours, but we got to be careful with that, and actually we need to turn this into a T minus 6 because for the first 
six hours, she's not doing anything. So after, say, half an hour, the total time would be 6.5, but she's only been removing the snow for half an hour. So we need to subtract away those first six hours in which she's doing nothing. Okay. So that will be for six to seven. And then we have another um, <clears throat> another piece of my function between hours seven and nine. And here again, we get a little bit tricky. We have the same idea of a rate of change of 108 uh, cubic feet per hour, and this time it's only between hours um, 7 and 9. So we're going to take that 108 and do the same thing times t, but this time minus 7 because it's at 7 that she starts this new rate of change. But I've also this time got to add in the 125 feet, cubic feet, that she removed in the last hour. Because by the time we get to 7, the amount that she has removed was, our, was 125 cubic feet at 7. And then we add in this new rate of change. So this is how much we have for... Seven, two, nine. All right. So that's part C. It's a little bit trickier than it looks at first glance, um, but if you just take a second and think about it, I think that uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. So again, we're done with that. So let's shrink that and move it over here. Now part D, the culmination here. How many cubic feet of snow are on the driveway at 9 a.m.? There's three parts we have to worry about here. One, how much, snow, um, how much snow accumulated before Janet started shoveling. Then, how much snow is on the driveway at 7 a.m. after she's been shoveling for one hour. And then, how much snow is on the driveway at the very end after she's been shoveling at her new, different rate for the next two hours? So, for part D, I know that in the first six hours, from, actually, let's, I don't like how I wrote that. Mm, easy now. So I'm just going to get rid of this. I don't like that. So we're say at 6 a.m. There are, like we said in part A, 142.275 cubic feet. Now we have to figure out how much snow accumulates in the next hour. And of course, in the next hour, there is snow not only falling, but then snow being removed by Janet at a rate of 125 cubic feet per hour. So, we'll say from 6 to 7, we accumulate some amount of snow. Now, how much? I'm not sure. So, to figure it out, we just look at the integral, because again, we're accumulating snow from 6 to 7. And I need to include the rate at which snow is being added, which is 7t e to the cosine t, minus the amount of snow that's being removed, which is 125. Again, I do not need to include a T with this 125 because the rate is 125. And again, this is the calculator section, so I just asked my calculator how much was accumulated in that time frame, and that was negative 8.961 cubic feet. Which is good news because that means that Janet is shoveling it faster than it's coming down. So, 
um, she's getting somewhere. And now we need to know what happens from 7 to 9. So let's look at that. From 7 to 9. We're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to incorporate our different um, rate of removal. So here we take the integral from 7 to 9 of the rate that the snow is falling, which is again 7t e to the cosine, oops, t minus now 108 dt. And that is negative 100.5 seven eight cubic feet so Janet's really making some progress in those last two hours there um, which since her rate actually slowed down we can only we can obviously assume well we know that the rate at which the snow was falling also slowed down so the total amount of snow Amount of snow equals one forty two point two seven five minus both of those, so minus eight point nine six one and minus one hundred point. 978 for a grand total of 26.335 cubic feet. And we're done. That is 2010 free res AP Calculus AB free response question number one.